In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your business domain with Microsoft 365 so you can use it with services like Outlook and Teams and you can look more professional. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Will. I've been working in IT for over a decade and I like to share my knowledge with you through this type of videos to help businesses and startups navigate the tech side of things. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me at will at setupdoc.com or check out my services at setupdoc.com. I'd be happy to help and answer any questions that you may have. When you first sign up for Microsoft 365, Microsoft assigns your tenant with a default domain like setupdoc.onmicrosoft.com. This is fine for testing or trials, but for real business communication, it just looks unprofessional. And your emails can get flagged as spam. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that it is best to connect your domain before adding users. This will prevent you from having to update their usernames at a later time. Now, before we jump into the screen, you'll need a few things before we get into the configuration side of it. Number one, a Microsoft 365 business subscription like Business Basic or Standard. You can do this by going to Microsoft.com, selecting Microsoft 365 and checking out their services. Number two, a domain name like setupdoc.com. And if you don't have one yet, you can check some of these providers like GoDaddy, Namecheap, Google Domains, and those are just a few. You also have the option to buy the domain from inside the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, but you need to be on the subscription and not on the trial version of it. And number three, you need access to your domain's DNS settings. This is where you'll add records to verify and configure your domain. So now that you know what you need, now we can get started with the configuration. Okay, so first things first, head over to admin.microsoft.com and log in to your Microsoft 365 Admin Center. This is where we'll go and we'll do the configuration. Another thing that I recommend you do is log into your domain host. I'm using Squarespace, so I'm already logged into it. Okay, so once you're signed in, head over to Setup and then scroll down and you'll see a list of tasks, the third one down being get your custom domain set up. Go ahead and click on it. And then it's going to bring you to this next page. This next page is just telling you about user impact that they recommend you add your domain. Before you start adding users this way, you'll save time and don't have to go back and update their usernames. The other one is about connecting your domain and it's just explaining to you steps that you're going to take to do the configuration. So let's click get started. In this section, we're going to add our domain name. So I'm going to be using binderspace.com. Click use this domain. Now it's going to bring you to the next step, which is verifying your domain. You have a few options. Number one, it's adding a TXT record to your domain's DNS record. Or if you don't have an option to add a TXT record, you can also add an MX record. And the final one, it's adding a text file. That's if you already have a website using your domain, like setup.com. Before we continue, there are five acronyms that I think are really important for you to understand because it will make it easier to understand what we're doing as we progress through the configuration. First up, the DNS. DSNS stands for Domain Name System. It's basically the internet's phone book. It translates your domain like yourbusiness.com into technical information like IP addresses. That's how the internet knows where to send things like your email or how to load your website when someone types in your domain. Next, the TXT record. This is one of the most common records that you'll work with. It lets you attach text to your domain and is usually used to prove that you own the domain or to protect your email. Think of it like a sticky note that says, Hey bro, this domain is legit. Trust the emails coming from it. It's often used with email security tools like the SPF, DKIM, or the DMARC to keep your emails from going to spam or getting spoofed. Then there's the MX record. MX stands for mail exchange. This tells the internet where to deliver your email. Think of it like your business mailing address, but for your inbox. If this isn't set up correctly, your email could get lost or bounce back. Now we got the A record. This one connects your domain to the actual IP address of your website. It's what makes your website load when someone types it in your domain. So if the DNS is the phone book, the A record is the exact location your website lives at. And finally, the C name record. C name stands for conical name. It is used to point one domain to another, kind of like a shortcut or alias. So if someone types in www.yourbusiness.com, the C name record then quietly redirects it to yourbusiness.com. Same destination, just a different name. So now that you know what each of these records does, you'll have a much easier time understanding what you're doing when Microsoft asks you to add or update them. Now let's continue with the configuration. Now that you understand what a TXT record is, let's hit continue. In this next step, we're going to add a record to make sure that we own the domain. So we're going to be using the TXT name, the TXT value, and the TTL that Microsoft is providing to us. So head over to your domain host and click DNS and click add record. And we're going to copy the at, the type is a TXT. And then we're going to leave it at four hours. That's just the default. You don't have to put the 3600. 
and then we're also going to copy the txt value and we're going to paste it now we click save go back to the admin center and click verify okay so now you verify that you own this domain so now we're going to add a few other records and we're almost done so click continue in this next step microsoft is providing us with some dns records that we need to add to our domain host we're going to keep the exchange and exchange online protection because that's what we're going to be using so make sure you leave that checked okay so we're going to start with the mx record so go ahead and expand this and we're going to copy the host name go back to your domain host add record we're going to paste this is going to be type is going to be an mx record the priority is going to be zero and then we're going to leave the ttl as four hours and we're going to need the mail server so we're just going to copy this value and then we're going to paste it click save the next record that you're going to have to add is the cname record so we're going to copy the host name we're going to add another record in domain host and paste that the type is cname cname doesn't have a priority so you don't have to add none of that and then we're going to copy this value and then we're going to add it click save and the last one is going to be the txt record so let's copy the name let's add a new record the value and the type is going to be a txt we're going to leave the ttl as four hours and we're going to paste this value click save Okay, and we added the three records that Microsoft wants us to add. So we go back to Microsoft Admin Center and then click continue. And that's it, pretty easy configuration to add your domain to 365. Now the only thing you have to do is if you already have existing users, go back to your portal and update their usernames to your domain. Now, if you need any help setting anything up like this, email me directly at will at setupdoc.com or check out my website at setupdoc.com. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.